Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. So I'm going to be sharing today about how to uh, how to uh, find out what the name of your host or your angels are, how to understand what they mean, what their purpose is, and also on dreams and visions, how to interpret them. Because once you get, I, I'm going to give you some some information that will help you interpret anything that God says to you or anything that you learn about what God says to you. This will help you study the Bible. This will help you uh, walk in the supernatural. It's really a really good foundation. So it's probably something that you want to go to the website, not to my website, to my Facebook group and download the, I already uploaded it. So don't, don't go download it while I'm talking to you. <laughs> Wait till after I'm done. But you can go uh, join my group if you don't already belong to it. I made it a private group for many reasons. Because um, some people think we're kooks, so if we are got a private group, not just any old weirdo can join and, and be part of it. We, it's for your protection. So anyway, so I'm going to go over the names, how you get the names of your hosts, what uh, the names, what the names of, you know, how to get the names of your hosts, how to decide what they mean, and um, how to find out other things about dreams and visions that you have, because sometimes interpreting your dreams and visions is very hard and sometimes it's very easy and I'm kind of looking over here because I'm I like to um, get me on on my um, when I do a live video I like to see it over here so I can keep track and know that it's actually it's actually working and it's not coming on just yet so I guess if you guys are seeing it it's actually there okay so this is it's learning the names of your angels is really important because the name usually tells what the angel does and it also will build your faith and you kind of have to start in a sense of um, trusting that you're hearing from the Holy Spirit it's good practice if you think if you ask or you think an angel's around and you ask them what their name is and you hear something, the first thing you hear in your head, write it down. And I'm going to show you how to figure out what that means. But asking your angels and your host what their name is or why they're there will really build your faith to help you to know that you're hearing in the spirit realm. So um, this information I'm going to give you will also help you to interpret your dreams and your visions. And part of this information is my own, and part of it I've gotten from other people. So um, I'm going to kind of simply go over it. And I also want to share with you, if I haven't written it down, and I better write it down or I'm going to lose it, um, uh, the name of one of the angels I just asked recently, um, Rain. Okay. Okay. So. I probably have about a list of seven to ten angels whose names I have written down. I don't regularly call them by their name because I'm just really learning about this and I don't really feel comfortable. Stryker, I believe Stryker is the name of my uh, uh, host that every time I go somewhere in a car I always say I send the angels before me to keep the animals off the road far enough ahead that I can appreciate the wildlife but yet they're not going to be a danger to us and they're not going to get hit. And I always sent the angels ahead to do that because uh, one year we kept hitting animals and I, I just, my heart saddens every time an animal is killed. The only animal I kill is a poisonous snake. I even rescue the bugs out of the dog dish. Now, if there's a grasshopper in my garden, I will feed it to my chickens because it is destroying. <laughs> But I will scoop the bugs and the beetles out of my dog water to save them. That's how much I love animals and, and trees and plants and nature, things that God's created. So anyway, so I sent this uh, post out to do this. And I asked him what his name was one time. And I think 
Sorry, dog. You're going to have to stay out until I'm done. Um, I think he said his name was Stryker. I kind of have to go look at my records. But when I looked up what the name meant, it meant to cast out a, to cast something out and reel it back in. And that perfectly fits with somebody taking a dog that's on the street and getting it off the street. And so I thought, so that kind of was what started me on asking the angels' names. Almost every time I ask the angels' names, um, some of the most weirdest, ridiculous sounding names come up that I have never heard about and I don't know nothing about. And this is how I find out about it. Now, let me tell you a story uh, that just happened yesterday. Uh, I was studying communion, which I taught earlier today. I was studying about communion and uh, the revelations were coming. You know, I'm writing a book right now on communion. And so everything I shared today, I have to put in this new book, in this revelation book. I don't think anybody's writing anything like I am about communion. Uh, but I was studying about communion and he took me to the tree trees in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life in the garden and all of a sudden I felt, I don't know why but I knew there was an angel there and I said, uh, you know what's your name? And he said, Ramos I go, Ramos? That sounds like a like a Greek god or something. I said, oh I didn't hear right but I just looked up the Ramos and it was really a hard journey uh, and I'm going to tell you some, some of the stuff I did and some of the stuff you can do I mean, no matter how crazy you think it is, this is practice, okay? Ask the, if you think there's angels, there always is angels around us all the time. If you look up at the sky, you will see them. They are so much of a ham. I see angels in the sky all the time. Now, I have thousands of pictures of angels in the sky. I, I can't even write books fast enough to, to give you the pictures. My picture book, Seeing Angels in the Sky, I just can't even write them fast enough to get the pictures in there. It's, it's so time-consuming. I see angels everywhere all the time in the sky and the clouds is the most amazing thing what you give honor to you will have more of so i asked this angel its name and it said ramus like ramus sounds like a greek god or something i said that must not be right but i wrote it down and i looked it up and all the different ways i looked it up was really fascinating and it taught me a lot <laughs> so i'm going to show you how to find it out and then i'm going to tell you what that means and oh, and I, oh, and I said to him, okay, and don't forget, whenever you ask an angel, whenever you see an angel or think you see an angel, ask them what their name is and then ask them why they're there. And journal, take notes. And this is something I kind of neglected lately. I take notes by telling you and stuff, but I, I haven't always journaled and, and it's so important. Like I interpret my dreams and I journal and I write that down, but my daily supernatural encounters, I, I haven't written down like I should. So I'm going to work on that. Anyway, um... So I said, why are you here? And he says, to impart knowledge. And I go, whoa, that's really cool because I'm studying about the tree of life and the tree. I was studying about communion and God took me to this. So he was sitting next to me and he was imparting this wisdom and knowledge to me. I thought that was really cool. So I looked up his name. And I'll tell you what it means at the end. But this is things that you can do. First of all, you have to trust that the Holy Spirit that is in you, that is called your guide, your teacher, your counselor, is helping you now if you were ever in the cult in the cult they have a spirit guide okay we have a spirit guide too but he's called the Holy Spirit because remember the new age of the cult always copies the original okay so God the Holy Spirit guides our spirit and he's called a teacher and a counselor and a comforter for a reason because that's his job okay so they always trust that the Holy Spirit in you is stronger if you listen to his voice than deception so don't be afraid of getting in deception just get into the holy spirit okay so you ask the host what their name is now the first thing you want to do is write it down the next thing you want to do is you want to find out the definition of that word now there's several different ways you can do this is it uh um is it literal or is it like a something else like a, a symbol or something so you start by looking it up in a dictionary or Google. And now if I get lazy, I just say, okay, Google, what does blah, blah, blah mean? And they start giving me references. And then I begin looking up those references and getting more and more information. So I would use a dictionary and then I would Google it and say, okay, Google, blah, blah, blah. Okay, important. Whatever the name is that's given to you, don't just look up the word look it up is it a noun or is it a verb what are the synonyms that go with it very important okay 
um, write down anything that comes to your mind, any thoughts, any memories, any stories, any history you heard about this name. Pray about it. Another thing is, is this a real name of a real person? Is this a name of a city, a country? Is this a place? Is this an organization? Okay. So whatever name you get in a dream or a vision, those are the things you want to look up. And even your host name because you can learn more about it when you learn its meaning. Is, is it a metaphor? Like if uh, in a dream, for example, if you heard, um, oh, like today, last night I had a dream um, that I was in a bunk bed and the lady next door made creations in ice and she pushed it over to me. And I thought, wow, that makes no sense. And then I remember, oh, wait a minute. I love hockey, ice hockey. I'm in bed that love and creations in ice hockey, ice hockey. And so I could put the two together and I knew for me that they were symbols that God was telling me about my passion for hockey, that he gave it to me. He gave me my passion for ice hockey. So, and that was just a short little dream when I was waking up. I don't remember much of it. I just remember that part and that right away I got that interpretation. So you have to look at what's happening in your life, what happened the night before, what things you're thinking about, what things you're worried about, what events have just happened, and um, what each symbol means. And also, now, you need to take the word or the name of the angel or the name in the dream, the words in the dream, and see if they are um, a part of a word. It might just mean it might just be the beginning or the end of a word or part of a word. So you got to pray about it, and you got to you, you got to look at all the words surrounding it, prefix, suffix, and all that stuff. And then the really important is look for the root of the word. Where does it come from, and what does the root word mean? And then one of the things that was really important that God showed me is look it up in the Hebrew. Excuse me, looking up in the Greek. When I started Ramos, uh, when I started looking up this word, um, it came up in all kinds of interesting stuff that was really good, but I felt as though, no, that's not it. And that, <laughs> I said, okay, what does Ramos mean in Hebrew? What does it mean in Greek? It's the word of God, Ramos, Ramos, the word of God. You know, and it, the word of God imparts knowledge. And this is what this, this host was, this angel was, giving me revelation on communion. Uh, and so I thought that was like, oh, this is so cool. So Ramus, the word. But it was like Ramus, the way he said it, it was like, it didn't connect the two. So that was really cool. Now, here is something on Bible study that will open the door to you on Revelation. On Bible study is um, ask when you're studying a specific scripture or you need to understand a dream or a vision, ask yourself these questions. Ask yourself what, who, why, when, where, and how. Okay, each one of those things, that's how God showed me about the tree of life. You have to listen to that if you haven't already about communion and the tree of life and the tree of death in the garden. Uh, he helped me to understand that by going through what was it there for, who put it there, when did they put it there, why did they put it there, and how was it put there. So ask yourself those important questions when you need to understand a dream, a vision, the host name, or directions the host has given you, or a Bible study. Now, break down each word and focus on each word. This is so cool. This is one of the things God showed me that really helped me to study the Bible. If you are an author or an inspiring author, we have great news for you. We publish family safe books for only $399. You heard right. As an author of over 50 books, Robin has the experience, knowledge, and tools to get your book published and distributed worldwide as a print and digital book. Our team will take your book and create a professional ebook and print book. The following steps are what is included in our fantastic price of only $3.99 or $4.99 for picture books. Interior design and format for print and Kindle. Ebook conversion. Professional book cover for print version, front, spine, and back. Professional book cover for Kindle version. Your ISBN number and worldwide distribution with print on demand. We do this all for you. 
We set up your account on Amazon and publish your book on your account. When you are ready to order copies of your book to sell or give away to friends, you simply sign into your Amazon account and order the number of books you need at a discounted price. No minimum order needed. To learn more or to start the process, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot net. For example, in this sentence, John jumped over the moon. You say, John jumped over the moon. Okay, John, who is John? Why are they talking about him? What, what is John doing? Where is he doing it? How is he doing it? When is he doing it? So you see, for, so you focus on the first word. John jumped over the moon. Who, John? Okay, then it's John jumped over the moon. He didn't crawl. He didn't fly. He jumped. So you take each word and you emphasize it. Then you meditate on it and you think on it. You think what other scriptures connect to this word. This is how I got my revelations on uh, the whole armor of God. And I have, a, I have a book out about that. So you And some teaching out in that. So if you want to know about the whole armor of God or any subject, this is how you do it. He'll, he, he, then John jumped over the moon. He didn't jump into it. He jumped, didn't jump under it. He jumped over it. How did he? Why did he? When did he? Who is he talking about? Who is John? Where is he? You know, you ask those questions. And then you say, okay, what scriptures did I hear about jumping over something? Then you might type in your Strong's Concordance in your uh, Bible study uh, the word. Uh, okay, what is the original word in this scripture? I'm just pretending it's a scripture over mean. Then you look up all those scriptures that have that word over in it. And you, the Holy Spirit begins to connect them together. Okay, then you look at John jumped over the moon. Not a moon, but the moon. So that must mean there's only one moon. So you analyze it, you think about it, you meditate on it, you connect other scriptures to it, you look up those scriptures, you look up the original meaning, the original intent, who it was written to, who it is for, is it for you, even though it was written to someone else. John jumped over the moon, not Venus or uh, Saturn, but over the moon. So you take your scripture and you tear it apart piece by piece like that. And you can do this with subjects. Uh, this is probably the most basic way that I study is I start getting revelation about a subject, so I start taking notes on it, and then God starts bringing other scriptures to my mind that have the same words or the same subject in it, and he starts putting them together and giving me revelation on these and these, and I write it down from my own notes, and then it becomes a book. And basically, every book I've written is because the host of heaven, the Holy Spirit, is giving me revelation knowledge that piques my interest, and I start researching and studying and connecting scriptures together, and it's so big and so exciting that I have to write a book about it because I want to share it. I want you guys to walk in the same thing. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. If it was a blessing to you, please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the Sponsor This Podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site and remember, it is natural to be supernatural.